Hi, I'm Tor Sunt, the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at the Massachusetts General Hospital, and I wanted to speak with you a little bit today about the choice among valve prostheses. If you're having valve surgery to replace a dysfunctional valve, your doctor may have asked you which kind of valve prosthesis you want. Now it's important to remember that some valves can be repaired. Remember, valves need to do two things to function correctly. They need to open all of the way, and they need to close all of the way. It's really pretty simple. If valves don't close all of the way, if they leak or are regurgitant, then oftentimes we can repair those valves. Whether it's a mitral valve, much, much more common these days to repair a leaky mitral valve than to replace it. And increasingly, we're repairing aortic valves that leak also. But if the valve is narrow, if it doesn't open all the way, if it's stenotic, or if it has mixed disease, does both, both leaks and is narrow, then most often we need to replace that valve. And you'll have to make a choice with your doctor about what kind of prosthesis you want. Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of valve prostheses, biological valves, or tissue valves, or pig valves, and mechanical valves. Mechanical valves are amazingly well-engineered devices. They're essentially, uh, essentially indestructible. They last forever. Most of the valve prostheses these days, mechanical prostheses these days, look pretty much the same. They're made of similar materials. Their performance is, broadly speaking, quite similar although the manufacturers like to argue subtle differences among them. But the truth is there's not a whole lot of difference among the different mechanical valves. The price you pay for this durability, for this remarkable engineering of the mechanical valves, is that the blood will want to clot on that mechanical valve, and so you need to take an anticoagulant, or what is oftentimes called a blood thinner. It doesn't actually thin your blood, it anticoagulates your blood and keeps it from clotting. The most common anticoagulant now is Coumadin. That's been around for a long time. Uh, and it's a very effective blood thinner, but it's, it's, uh, the dosing of it is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, empirical. It depends on frequent blood tests when you first start taking the drug. Once you're on a stable dose of Coumadin, then you can have your blood tested once a month, and there's not a lot of changing of the dose. But it can be a, 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 a a little bit complex to manage that drug. On the horizon very soon there are other drugs, direct thrombin inhibitors and the like, which we will probably be able to use instead of Coumadin for mechanical prostheses. The alternative to a mechanical valve is a biological valve or a pig valve or bovine pericardium, cow pericardial valve. These tissue valves have the advantage that you don't need to take Coumadin. The disadvantage of the tissue valves is that they can wear out with time. The, um, the duration or the, the, the durability of those valves depends a little bit on your age. So if you put the same valve into a 10-year-old boy, it might only last four years. If you put that same valve in someone who's in their 40s, it might last 10 or 12 years. But that biological valve in the aortic position in somebody over the age of 65 has about a 95% likelihood of lasting as long as the rest of you does. The mitral position is subject to higher stresses, higher forces, higher pressures, and so the, the cutoff, age cutoff for that is closer to 70. If you're over about the age of 70, you can have a tissue valve in the mitral position with about a 95% likelihood that you won't be back for deterioration of the valve. But if you're younger than that, you run the risk of degeneration and requiring a reoperation. And the choice between those two, between reoperation on the one hand and anti anticoagulation on the other, is a qualitative difference that only you can determine how you feel about it. You can consult with your doctor, but your doctor can't really make that decision for you any more than your doctor can decide whether you like vanilla or chocolate better. It's a qualitative difference between the two, and you have to decide how you feel about the risk of reoperation versus the risks associated with anticoagulation. So these are the common questions that I'm asked in the office when we talk about valve surgery. If you have any other questions, feel free to consult the Mass General website or give us a call. Our number's on the site as well. Thank you.